Hello. 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 Pretty good voice. Pretty good voice. <laughs> I'm Roger Hendrick Simon. I'm the director of the Simon's Studio, which has been in New York corrupting people for 42 years. <laughs> <laughs> and this must be the free seminar because it's packed. <laughs> so I'm very happy you're here, even if it's free. I mean, what a, it's all free today. Um, years ago, I was in a country which this lovely young lady called Persia when I met her today, and we call it Iran. And I was there, as I did for many years, uh, doing workshops with the actors of Iran in 1976. You may remember, since all of you look so old, that uh, that was not a good year for Iran in terms of revolution. It was, for some people, a good year, but for a lot of people it was not, because the whole country went down. In my workshop, I, it was one of a series of workshops I did uh, at that time while I was directing in London at the Royal Court Theatre and doing s some film work there. And I went on a series of junkets to Iran, South Africa, India, Pakistan, working with the actors in those countries, the directors in those countries, for the purpose uh, they, had, they invited me as an American director because they wanted to know about our, our American theater, mostly, technique, acting, whatever. They wanted to know, basically, because they looked up to the United States as a leader of the world. And when I say they wanted to know, they really wanted to know everything. <laughs> So we were just joking, just two minutes ago, this, this lovely gentleman said to me, you're going to teach me everything in one hour. <laughs> I said, yes, and after one hour you will be a superstar. <laughs> that's all you need. And that's the same as what I had in Iran. They said to me, after I gave them a couple of exercises, and they did them, and then I said, great, great, let, now let's do it again. And he said, no, 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 Roger, no, 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 no. We, we practice after you leave. You, you give, give me next exercise, next exercise. I said, no, no, no. I said, excuse me. You, you didn't get the first exercise. I said, please, let's do it again. No, 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 no. We understand what you're saying. We understand. But you must give us next thing. We, you're only here for two days. We want you to give me everything. <laughs> there was a desperation. There was an urgency that I very rarely had felt before of people who wanted to be given everything as quickly as they could so that they could become respectfully Western. Well, we know what happened in 1976 when people are forced to go in a way that's not part of them, their own nature. And the same, I think, is true of us as actors. We balance two things to stay in this business. We balance the dream, mm -hmm. and that's an important thing to have, and we balance reality. Both things are in much abundance in the other room. When you walk in there, you see the dream. You see people that are going to help my career. <laughs> <laughs> you see jobs, oh my God, I can audition here. I'm going to be able to have all this, and I can sign up and get all this free stuff. <coughs> yeah. The reality, however, is also in that room. If you look, a lot of people don't want to look. The reality is many of those people are lifers, like myself. I'm 24 years old, as you can see. <laughs> but I am, you see because I think as much as I can, like I always did. I'm still doing it, and I've spent my whole life doing it. And I'm not Paul Newman. 
you see. If I had gone into this to become Paul Newman, I would have been extremely disappointed because I didn't become Paul Newman. But some people in that room are there to be Paul Newman and won't be happy unless they are. The first thing I'm going to tell you, and then we'll, we're, we're going to have, have some work as well, but the first thing I would tell you is you really do have to be committed to loving what you're doing. It's about the process. It's about the work. And I have to say that because this, what we're talking supposedly about today is on-camera audition technique, and many of you are here because of the on-camera part. Mm -hmm. And on-camera connotates film work. Film work connotates Hollywood. Hollywood connotates fame. How many of us in this room are going to be Paul Newman? Without any disrespect, I would say maybe not too many. Maybe not too many. Now, I know you know that, but you don't know that, which is why I'm saying it. You know it, but you don't. And that's the dream and the reality. You have to really love the idea of the work. And what I'm going to try to do is share with you that I'm going to tell you that if you really want to work, it's not going to be in this hour. I'm, I, I hate to disappoint you. You're not going to learn everything from me in this hour. I know that's a big blow, but you are welcome to come to our table, those who haven't, mm -hmm. and sign up for a trial, one time only, class where you will work with me, because you can see how many people we have here for three hours. Yeah. You also should come to the table afterwards because all the work that we shoot today in this whole hour will be shown on our monitor right after the class, and you'll see what we did. Um, so the business part of this, which I can't ignore because we're in New York, we're not in Kalamazoo, Michigan. The business part of this is you're not going to make a lot of money doing this. Probably not. For some time anyway, and maybe not even then. The business of this is it shouldn't matter. There are other ways to make a lot of money, and easier ways, and less cutthroat ways, and less competitive ways. So there are, there are a few very talented people like thousands, maybe even millions, that are out there trying to do what we're trying to do. The only assurance that you have of having a shot is one, you have to love what you're doing, and two, you have to be trained. And by trained, I don't mean get in front of a camera trained. In this city, you can pay for anything. You can go to any, almost any school, and without any training at all, that first class, they'll put you right in front of a camera. <laughs> oh, good, I'm making film. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like saying to a dentist, come on in, here's your drill, go to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's not, you know, I'm an actor, it's not that. Are we not a profession? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. <laughs> that's lawyers and doctors, and that's what my uncle says anyway. I'm not really a professional. I dealt with that. Training is where it's at, whether you're on camera or on the stage. Yep. The best people I've worked with, John Lithgow, Chuck Turner on Broadway, Otto Osando. These are people who've been in my studio and, or have been directed or both by me. They didn't start on camera. And they still work on theater all the time. So can you people in the back hear me? Yeah. Well, see, on camera, I don't need a voice. Bullish, bullshit. On camera, you need a voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
oh, I took voice in college. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for the camera now. <laughs> you took voice in college with 18 to 21 year old kids who were getting easy credits, most of the three credits. They were not professionals. Your teachers were probably good, but they were not full-time professional conservatory teachers. This is reality. Yeah. There are exceptions mm -hmm. to that. But this was, you know, undergraduate training. Oh, I took voice. John Lithgow keeps working on his voice. Al Pacino keeps working on his voice. Oh, but he's a film actor. They work on their voice. So in our studio, we just don't stick people in front of cameras. We do the basics. Voice work. Movement work. Improvise. All of that goes in so that there is something to put on camera. Okay? Very important. Every class, there's an on-camera element in every class that we do. But there's also continuing to do the basics, rather than, did that, don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do that. Don't say that to Yo-Yo Ma, the cello is a cellist. Oh, I don't want to do my exercises anymore. I'm Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> what are you kidding? Don't say that to Lamar James of the Cleveland whatever, when he was with, I don't even know where he is, Los Angeles. I don't need to practice, I'm, I'm you know. He does the same basic exercises he did when he started in junior high school. You don't stop with that. And I'm saying that because a lot of people think you do. They want to move on. You don't move on. You add, but you never give it up. At least that's where I'm coming from. And I'm an old-fashioned guy to many people because I say that. But I know the people I respect, and they come from that kind of training. Samuel L. Jackson, whom I worked with, classical work. Classical background. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he just popped up in front of the camera. James Earl Jones. Worked with him. He's done a few Shakespeare productions. Like Othello, 150 times. Okay? Very important to know this. Those are the people I respect. Mel Gibson. Before he did the movie Hamlet, he did the play Hamlet. He played Hamlet as a young classical actor. On and on and on. I'm going to start with also telling you that in our studio there will be every month we'll be doing an on special on camera session, just on camera work. The other sessions are on camera, but with all the other elements as well. And people who are in our studio class will get discounts for that special once a month on camera lab with Dan Simon, who's shooting today, and myself. Dan, Dan now is finishing his second feature film that he directed, nice. co-produced, and stars in. Damn, how can he do all that? He's doing all that because he loves it. And he has to because when you shoot low budget independent films, you do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the wonderful thing about New York right now is there's a lot of opportunity to do low budget independent films, but you gotta do it all. And you gotta know it all. I'm just an actor. No, 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 you're not just an actor. You're a collaborator. You work with the director, not for the director, and you, you know a little bit about what goes into behind the camera, you know a little bit about the lights, if not a lot, and you know how to ask, if nothing else, ask the right questions and to help and collaborate. When I started at Yale Drama School, I came to New York, you had to make a choice. If you want to do film, you go to a place called Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wanted to do theater, oh, you went to New York. Mm -hmm. It's not so cut and dry now. There's a lot of independent film here. There's a lot of opportunity, but don't give up theater. Don't give it up. You get discovered, if nothing else. But you should love language. Mm -hmm. You should read. Oh, no. I do film. I don't. You read. <laughs> you read. No, I, no, I, I watch movies. I, 
I don't need to. I can get the movie. I don't need to read. <laughs> I, 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 I can. I, it's on. It's online. <laughs> Everything's online. My whole life is online. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit much. You know, you can actually go. You, you, it's hard to even make eye contact with people anymore. You know, they're walking around like this. <laughs> even in even in our class, I have to tell people put that away. At least use a real script. No, they're using this. So yeah, things change. You have to go. You have to roll with the punches. <laughs> things change. Nobody has books anymore. Drama bookshop closed. Can't get a script. Problem. But we survive. But you should be interested if you're film oriented in everything politics. It's pretty hard to be interested without getting <laughs> depressed. But you should know what's you should know what's going on. You should read the papers and you should, you know, use your own judgment about what you read, but in other words, open it up. Open the open up a little bit there. You know, go to museums, go to concerts, not just rock concerts. Go to, go, go, go hear the Philharmonic, good jazz. It's close to being an actor, jazz musicians, you know. Go to the zoo, study the animals, all kinds of stuff here. In this city, the whole city is a zoo. You study the animals. <laughs> Study the animals, <laughs> and those animals give you characters that you then use <laughs> on camera yeah. or on the stage. Absolutely. Where do you think? Well, oh, I get it from the script. Horseshit! You don't get it from just the script. The script mm -hmm. you remind reminds you of that guy you saw at Yankee Stadium in 1989. I remember him. I'm going to use that walk. Everybody else doesn't think about things like that. Actors study life and everything about it. But I'm just a film actor. I just want to do it on camera. Okay. There are 12 things that I put down because I had to sound like I'm knowing what I'm talking about. So I put down 12 things that I think are important to start with about doing on camera work. And then we'll, we're going to put some victims up here and try them out. The first I already talked about. A lot of people think on camera acting is about this. On camera acting is about I'm doing on camera. This is on camera. And when I do stage, I do this. <laughs> Why is that? If you did a film of me right now addressing you, would, would, would I be talking about this? No. no. That would be false. Oh, but I'm doing on camera, so I'm going to talk. <laughs> the reality is I talk like this. And if the film comes on, shooting me in a room, they're, they're going to have to get me like this. Now, maybe I'll be less physical when they do the close-up. Maybe I'll do this instead of this when I'm doing a master. Do you know? But I'm not going to do this because I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's called boring acting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's boring. That's kind of, that's, anything beyond this is unreal. I don't want to do something that's unreal. Are you kidding? Acting, acting is unreal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea is we make them think it's real, but there's nothing we do that's real. It's, it's, it's all artificial. If it wasn't artificial, why would they pay us? <laughs> what, what, what kind of, I mean, that would be therapy or something, you know? I mean, to, be a pain, to make you think what I'm doing is real. That's the, that's the craft. So, second thing. You gotta have something to put in front of the camera, which a lot of people think, oh yeah, I forgot about that. First day I want to get right in front of the camera, I can do something. No, no. Time has to be spent preparing what you're going to put in. Don't waste our high definition video. <laughs> get something you can be proud of. Work on it. Get it ready. Don't waste your time. It's not about just being beautiful and looking beautiful. And all. In fact, many times you're not going to be beautiful. You're going to be playing a character that's not beautiful. 
<coughs> that's tough for some people. Preparation. These are basic things. They have nothing to do with anything but acting, period. But preparation on camera means that right now you are preparing. You're in your own little private trailer. Each chair is your own trailer on the set because you know some of you will be coming up and working. So although you're listening, hopefully, <laughs> you're also preparing. What are you preparing? You're getting yourself into some condition emotionally and mentally to do what you might be working on. When, because otherwise I'm going to be calling on you and you go, oh, I need to prepare. <laughs> when you're on a movie set, you don't know when you're going to get called. You get the schedule and they tell you, it'll be 12.45. And all of a sudden, it's 12.45 and they're two hours behind. And now, what do I do? I was prepared to go on at 12.45. <laughs> when are they going to call me? And now it's 1.45 and they haven't called me because there's a problem, somebody lost, somebody missed a train or something. and So you're in the trailer, what are you doing? Watching television? Yeah, maybe, but you have to constantly be ready. Mm -hmm. a me a mentally and, and emotionally and everything else, so when they go, okay, time! Oh, shit. <laughs> you, you now are ready to shoot. So people think it's about when they say action, it's not about that. That's the easy part. When they say action, that's just when the camera's rolling. You're into it way before that. You're into it from the moment you wake up that morning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're thinking about that scene. You're thinking about that role. You're thinking about where you start in that scene that they're going to shoot. All day. Doesn't mean you're not talking to people. Unless you're Daniel Lewis, Daniel Day-Lewis was Lincoln on the set all day, and he refused to be anything else. <laughs> you can be yourself, but basically you also have to partly be in the part, so that any time they choose to call you, how glamorous that is, isn't it? That you have no control as an actor. How glamorous, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Didn't you choose a glamorous profession? Mm -hmm. Anytime they call you, you have to be ready. You have no choice. You want to be in a profession like that? Be an actor. You're, you're, sorry, sorry. Unless you're the star, here's where you are. Mm -hmm. They treat you nice, hopefully, but that's where you are. You're just an actor. That's right. When they, when they say jump, you jump. That's what you get paid for. You have to be ready to jump any time. So preparation. And there are lots of distractions to keep you from being prepared. There's food on the set. There are extras, there are extras on the set who think movies are about kibitzing, having a party, socializing. Ooh, there's Sam Jackson. Hey, Sam, Mr. Jackson. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> he walked away from me. <laughs> Why did he walk away from me? Somebody told me that in one of my studio sessions. They said, you know, that Sam Jackson. I said, yeah, yeah, he's a real shitty guy. I said, what? I went up and said, hi, Sam, and he walked away. <laughs> I said, do you have the $8 million movie on your shoulders? <laughs> While you're eating your face stuffing your face and drinking as an extra, he's thinking about what he's going to do the next two scenes that he has. This is not a party! Oh, But I just want to leave him be. But I came on this so I could meet. Then don't be an extra, baby. You're not an actor. You're an extra, you're not an actor. And there's nothing wrong with being an extra, but don't tell me you're an actor. Please, don't tell me you're an actor. It has nothing to do with acting. Concentration. Shutting out that distractive stuff. All that talk. Focusing. 
I just remember doing Wall Street 2 with, with uh, Oliver Stone, and the hardest part wasn't doing the scene. You can see it on, on the acting reel if you go to our website, that scene. But the hardest part was waiting to make my cross into the table each, each take. Because during that waiting, there were people wandering through all the time and people changing the lights. And they were trying to be respectful. They weren't trying to make noise, but there was a lot of distracting. And all I, I had to shut all that out and focus on where I was going, where I came from, what I was trying to do, all of those things while there's all this physical stuff going on. People think movie acting is real. It's extremely artificial. You're working with all kinds of artificial stuff. And your job is to make what you can real. So it's nothing real about movie acting. It's snow being put in your face, somebody's up there on the grid. What's real about that? <laughs> Feeling 100 degrees in the, in, in the heat when it's 35 degrees in the studio. You have to do a sense memory or some kind of thing. You know? It's not real. You have to make it real. Concentration. Play the space when you're on camera. So if I'm here, which is where some of you will be, and Danny's over there, and I'm doing this scene on camera, I'm not talking to the back row. So now I'm just talking to Danny. So now I'm going to use my, my voice for this space. I don't have to project. If I'm talking to you, I'm going to talk to you like this, because that's the space. I don't have to talk like this to you. On stage, I would have to talk like this to you. So play the space. Now, create visual pictures. This is something many people don't realize. Obviously, you have to be in the moment when you're on camera. You have to be thinking about your relationship with the other person, all of those things. But you also have to realize that your co-star is this not just the actor. Your co-star is that camera and those lights. Oh no, I'm an actor. I'm in my thing. That's up to the director. Oh shit. That's part of your work. You have to know when you're in the light and what that light does for you. You have to know what that camera does for you. So the first thing I do is, Danny, what, what shot are you doing? What, what it's going to be a medium close-up. Medium close-up. Now is, I know that it's from here up. That means all the stuff I did before in the scene, they're not going to see. I, on the master shot, they saw that. Now, I don't have to worry so much about this, I'll, but I have to give the feeling of this up here. You see? So you have to know the space. All right? These are very specific technical things. Don't ignore those cameras and lights and assume that somebody will take care of it for you. I'm just a poor little actor. I'm, my job is to be emotional and to do a character. You're a collaborator. Okay. The star in a film is going to get 20 takes if he wants. Unless he's Frank Sinatra who insisted only on one take, and everybody else who were actors would, oh no, I need another take. But <laughs> stars get as many as they want, usually. You, if you're lucky, one take, and we move on. You have to always be ready to do one take. That's not fair, is it? Who said, should, why should it be fair? It's a business. Which means you have to be better than the star. You have to be so prepared that you know everything you need to know to do the best you can on that one take. And if you get a second take, God bless, that's, that's, that's icing on the cake. One take is all you get, it better be a good one. This is, you're not in class. This is a professional thing, one take. That means incredible discipline and great training to do that. On the mark, right there, so he goes, that's pretty good. We'll move on. Hopefully he gives you another shot, but usually they don't. Sometimes they really don't. Because, let's be honest, if you get into a major film, is it going to be a lead? 
No, probably not, unless your uncle is the producer. Mm -hmm. And even then, they want named people. You're going to get a small, you're lucky to get a small thing, one line. If, if one line is a lot. Right? On camera acting. What can you do with one line? I hate auditions with one line. God. Um, and the hardest part, waiting, 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 waiting. That's the hardest work. How glamorous that is, isn't it? Sitting around all day, seemingly doing nothing. But you have to be doing a lot in terms of preparation. Some people think they just come in, they shoot, they leave. No. The only person that works all the time is the director. And maybe the DP, the director of photography. The others, there are breaks. And lots of waiting around. You don't have to know your lines when you do on camera. You have to know them inside out. So that you can stand on your head and do them if you had to. You don't have to know them. You have to know them. And you have to go over them so many times, they're perfect. And you don't have to act them when you go over them. You just have to know the words so that you don't go, oh, I'm sorry, can I do that again? I, I did. No. Perfect, you should know them. That way you're free to begin to let things happen. You don't have to worry about the words. They're there. You don't even have to worry about them. So don't just learn them last minute. You better, if, if it's last minute, you better be pretty good at fast learning. And that's the, that's the one thing that I find people, that's where, that's where people mess up. They, they know them, but they don't know them well enough. So they're nervous. They're nervous, and, and they're reaching for the words. They're reaching for the lines, and, and as a result, the director goes, tighten it up, tighten it up, tighten it up. And they can't tighten it up because they don't know the words. The last thing is, it's never a last thing, by the way. <laughs> but, but for the 12 Simon Studio Today notes, they'll change tomorrow, which is why I said don't, don't put it in ink. I might change my mind on any of this. End of page. Yeah. The last thing I want you to, sh to share with you is a lot of people think your acting is about your words. And it is. And so when they finish their last piece of dialogue, you see them just kind of tuning out. <laughs> but the director didn't say cut. Well, yeah. oh, but I finished my lines. <laughs> you, you think your lines are what? I mean, what? The camera's still rolling. Well, why are you rolling? I finished my speech. What do you, <laughs> what do you mean why is what? They want, they, they want to see your reaction. What happens after that last line is very important. They may want to use that. That may be your best shot, by the way. Oh, it couldn't be. I, I want them to conclude all my lines. Your best shot might be the reactions to the person who you're talking to and how they took your last line, and now you have to play off of that look. And that shot close-up could be devastatingly wonderful. So stop with the ego about your lines and, and realize that it's, it's a reaction medium, film. It's about reaction shots. If you watch films, most of it is reaction. So although the lines are very important, and the voice is very important, and all of that, stay with it until you hear cut, and pray that the director forgot to say cut. Pray <laughs> that he leaves you mm -hmm. for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> He can use that footage for reaction shots, possibly somewhere else. You have a chance to show the life of that character and what that character was doing after that last line. It's a bonanza for you. Instead of, it's over. In auditions, I notice people, they say the last line, they go, scene. <laughs> That's like cordis interruptus. 
I mean, we want to know. We want to, to stay with that last moment, don't we? And then let it fade out slowly. Instead of sing. Okay? So now, in this remaining part of this hour, which will, after this, you will know everything you need to know. <laughs> um, again, I, I, uh, I hope you understand that um, Rome is not made in a day. Go to the table at the end of this and see whatever we have. Talk to myself further. Um, please come and do a three-hour session with me. We're making a very special offer for those who would like to try being a victim <laughs> to really work with us for three hours in one of our lab sessions. Um, I'm going to give you the real challenge of film acting. I want to do a monologue. Yeah, okay. Most film acting is 10 to 15 second scenes. Very rarely do you get to do a monologue. So you're going to have 15 seconds on camera, those who come up here, which means you're in preparation right now. And when we say action, you will be sitting or standing in this area. You have a choice. You can stand. You can sit so that everyone can see it. And the person opposite you will be where, where Danny is, yeah. and you'll be playing it to that person. Okay? 15 seconds. Oh, but that's not enough. That's a lot <laughs> in film. You want to do film? That's what it's about. You want to do more than that? Do theater! Yeah. I can have three hours! <laughs> well, but then I have to know how to act. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Wow. How many people look good 